It was 1966, and 22-year-old Ingrid Pedersen was sitting in her living room watching TV. Accompanying her was an old family friend who was visiting. The channel then cut to a program of the Beatles, and it was at this moment that Pedersen's family friend would say something that would forever change her life. You see John right there? That's your brother. She stared at the screen in shock, seeing a striking resemblance that she never noticed before, and it was only then that she thought to herself, yes, it really is true. She began looking through dozens of magazines and newspapers, cutting out any photos of John Lennon that she could find and hid them in the drawer of her bedroom. She was terrified that she would be betraying her parents if they ever found out what she had learned. Pedersen was currently working as a nurse and already had intentions to get married, which required a birth certificate. She knew that her mother kept a tin box in her bedroom containing all the family's documents. When she was alone, she peeked inside and found an aging adoption paper labeled Liverpool County Court. It read her full name, Lillian Ingrid Maria Pedersen, and her birthday. She then looked at the top of the print and saw a second name that made her heart sink. Victoria Elizabeth Lennon. Confronted with so much overwhelming information, she started to cry. Was her whole life a lie? Why was she given away? How did all of this happen? It was in the early 1940s and John was living with his mother, Julia, at a dairy cottage in Liverpool, while his father, Alf, was away fighting in World War II. Julia was starting to get lonely and depressed and began attending dance halls during the night. Here, she met a Welsh soldier named Taffy Williams. They soon fell in love and Julia was then pregnant with his baby in mid-1944, all behind Alf's back. When he did return home from the war, Julia claimed that she got pregnant from an unidentified soldier that raped her. In a private conversation, Williams gave her an ultimatum, stating that he would only help her raise the coming baby if she agreed to abandon John and Alf and start a new life with him. When she refused, the relationship was over. Julia then entered labor and was taken to Elmswood Salvation Army Nursing Home on June 19, 1945, and Victoria was born. Alf offered to help her raise their new child, but Julia was also met with intense pressure from her side of the family. Her raising an illegitimate child was unacceptable, they thought. If Julia took Victoria in as her own, she would be completely disowned by her family. Subsequently, Victoria was given up for adoption to Margaret and Petter Pedersen. Her name was changed, and she unknowingly started a new life with her new family in Norway. Julia then ended her relationship with Alf, and John was taken in by his aunt Mimi just a few years later. A series of strange and unexpected circumstances caused the Lennon family to be divided into two, with the subjects of this, for the longest time, having no idea that they were connected to each other in any way. It has been strongly debated as to whether John was ever aware that he had a long-lost half-sister. Some sources say that his family, including his Aunt Mimi, swore to keep the whole thing a secret. That silence was never broken, and John never even learned that Victoria existed. Other sources strongly disagree with these claims. They say that John was told about Victoria in 1964 by his Aunt Harriet when he was attending a family reunion. Not only was he aware of her existence, she became one of the biggest obsessions that he ever had in his life. He spent large sums of money putting up ads in the newspaper and even hiring private investigators to look for her. When Pedersen found out about her relation to the Lennon family, she vowed to never put any attempt into contacting them as long as her mother was alive. Coming forward with what she knew just would have been too traumatic for her adoptive mother, 
and the rest of her family. Despite John's huge efforts, they were cut short after his death in 1980, and he and Pedersen never found each other. When her adopted mother died in 1998, Pedersen finally told her story. She was featured in The Sun, The Associated Press, and ITN on live television. Although it was now too late for her to ever find John, she hoped to get in touch with his family. But I hoped to meet his sisters, my sisters, and any other relative that would like to meet me. And Yoko? If she's willing, yes. She's the sister-in-law. <laughs> yes, you should meet your sister-in-law. John Lennon's sister, Julia Baird, briefly met Pedersen unexpectedly in 2000 at a ceremony held on the 20th anniversary of John's death. However, a family reunion never happened, and it still hasn't. Even long after telling her story, Pedersen has never met with the rest of her family. Attempts at contacting Yoko and her children have remained unsuccessful, and for whatever reason, she has allegedly yet to respond to any of Julia's invitations to visit. Whether or not the Lennons will ever truly come together is only a matter of time. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to share this video, subscribe, and check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to exclusive content and watch videos early.